Hello everyone, I have a new Android tutorial for you. Uh, today we are going to be taking a little bit of a break from our video to GIF series, uh, building an application from scratch. And we're going to talk about probably one of the most important things in an Android application, and that is the um, activity lifecycle. So if you've noticed that I have two different activities, I have tutorial and tutorial 2, both extend activity and I've added both of them to my manifest and I also have two different layouts. I have main.xml which just says tutorial and has a go to to button and main 2xml which just says tutorial 2. Now I've set it up so when I click the go to to button I start the activity the tutorial 2 class and also I've overridden each of the different um, basically activity lifecycle methods I'm just gonna say uh, on restart, on start, on creative course, which you have to, um, which you, you usually override uh, in order to set the content view. Uh, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. Now understanding what each of these does and what you should do in each of them is one of the most important things you have to understand. So I have my little uh, emulator up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you when each of these methods are called to start out. You notice I put log tags in each of them so this will show up in logcat. You see I've already been messing around with it a little bit. And basically I'm going to show you which order these uh, execute in which is a, a very important thing to understand. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that. That'll pop this up. Let's go to logcat. Notice that tutorial 1 on create is run first which is uh, makes sense. I mean on, uh, it should be the first one to be run. Then on start is run and then on resume is run. Now, um, that's pretty much just what happens, like the order that happens. On create is usually called when the activity, of course, is first created. And this is usually when you uh, set up all your different um, static setups, like creating views and setting button listeners and things like that. And it is also where you maybe get uh, the bundle of when you previous frozen application state so you can load like variables and things like that and this is always followed by on start that's pretty much a rule which we can see here and on start is when uh, the activity being this thing uh, is shown to the user and this is usually followed by either um, on resume or on stop on, res on resume being of course if it's resume on stop is if it stops um, and on resume is called when the activity first um, interacts with the user and this is when uh, this activity is at the forefront like you're actually like touching buttons and clicking things that's after on resume has been called and this is when whatever user input goes to it uh, that would be after on resume is called on pause is when uh, the system is uh, about to like start a different activity in your application and on pause is uh, uh, or I'm just gonna go over what each what you should do in each of them after this but it's basically called when say you're switching to a different activity and you need to kind of freeze this activity and it's important to note that um, code in here should be very very quick meaning that you shouldn't really be doing very much intensive activities in on pause. And on stop is uh, called when um, after you've switched to a different activity and the previous activity is no longer visible to the user. And this is, you're, you'll see this happen when we switch over to tu tutorial 2. Uh, when we click this button you'll notice that on stop it has been called because we're switched to a different activity and our previous one has no longer been seen. And again uh, on stop usually follows on pause. Of course, uh, on resume can also follow on pause. Um, and now on stop can either be followed by on restart, which is up here when, say, we go from our second activity back to our first activity and we want to use it again, then on restart will be called. And if we end up closing the actual program, or the activity uh, actually gets destroyed before we ever get back to it, then on destroy will be called. And this is usually happens when someone calls the um, finish method, to which will pretty much finish any uh, 
anything in the activity and it also be called uh, say if in an orientation change when we need to destroy the activity to either save space or basically rebuild it and I'll tell you a couple cool tricks later to uh, distinguish between those two okay so now notice that on start on create on start and on resume have been called so we're gonna go ahead and just hit the back button now what this back button does is it actually destroys the activity so we'll be able to see that on pause is then called because we're switching away from the activity on stop is called because we no longer see the activity and then on destroy is called because we've actually got destroyed the activity you could say so let's go ahead and open that back up notice on create on start on resume a bit called so next time let's hit the uh, home button now the important difference between the home button and the back button is the home button actually does not destroy the activity so you'll notice that on pause and on stop will be called but on destroy actually won't be called unless of course you press the home button and then uh, you're running a bunch of other really intensive programs and the uh, operating system decides to uh, get rid of your resources in order to run uh, more priority programs. So let's go ahead and hit that. Notice that on pause and then on stop has uh, executed but actually on destroy has not been executed. So your activity is still there so we can still go back to it so let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up this, scroll down to it, tutorial. Notice that on restart is then called because we had previously called on stop. And then on start of course has been called on resume has been called. Notice that on create was also not called because we're not actually recreating the activity. Alrighty. Um, now I don't know exactly in this emulator how to force an orientation change, but just understand that uh, an orientation change is pretty much destroying the activity. So you would see on destroy called, and you would see on on create called after that. So let's go ahead and hit go to two. Notice that in tutorial one. On pause has been called because we're kind of getting away from uh, the current activity. And this is when on create, on start, and on resume are called in tutorial T. And notice that on stop has been called in tutorial 1 because we no longer see it anymore. This is tutorial 2. So if we, we hit the back button on, on in tutorial 2, we notice that it goes all the way through on destroy because we've actually destroyed that activity, you could say. And... Um, Let's see, we pause it and then we restart and start and then resume. There we go. We've resumed the original um, activity, which you can see there. Now I've hit go to two and then hit, say, this one. Then tutorial uh, two calls on pause and on stop, which is, it doesn't actually destroy itself because we haven't actually hit the back button. If we hit this, then tutorial two will resume itself, destroys itself, etc. Tutorial one destroys itself. So you, after we're looking at that, you kind of get a, uh, an idea of how it goes through each of these different methods. Um, again, I, pretty much, I think I explained what really should go in on create. Um, on restart, of course, is what you want to set up after you had called on stop, basically after the um, activity has no longer been seen by the user. Say you want to somehow do something that you want to do when it's the activity is seen by the user again say you maybe want to refresh some values you've gotten from a server you'd put that in on restart or on start would be another one um, and then uh, on resume of course is uh, when user input is now being received by the application um, so you might want to set up something in there and then on pause is basically uh, where you might, might want to uh, commit unsaved changes to uh, persistent data like a SQL database or a text file or something and maybe stop any other anima animations that might be consuming uh, CPU cycles and the important thing is that this has to be very quick and uh, speedy because um, in on pause um, if the on pause takes a long time then that's just going to delay the on start or on resume of the other activity that we're going to and on stop is when, of course, the activity is not going to be seen by the user anymore. And I've already pretty much explained that. And on destroy is when you definitely, definitely want to save any data that uh, you want to keep persistent if you haven't already and on pause. Okay. Now, um, one important thing to understand in on stop is differentiating between when someone calls finish as in, in as in an orientation change 
or uh, someone actually wants to finish the app by pressing the back button. Um, and you can do that by, call the, by calling the if uh, is finishing method. And if you mouse over that, it gives a pretty good uh, explanation of it. Now this, it checks whether the activity is finishing either because they called uh, finish or someone else has requested that it finished. And what will happen is the code in here um, will be executed if, say, someone calls uh, this.finish. But if there's some sort of orientation change, the code in here won't be, uh, uh, won't be called. Because we're, not we're just basically rebuilding the, or rebuilding the activity. We're not actually destroying the activity. And I'm pretty sure that's uh, a good explanation of it. Now, if you really want to get kind of a visual look into it, we can go ahead and bring up this here and go to the Activity Lifecycle page in the Android Developers, and they give you a nice little graph that really helps you understand it. I have mentioned this in some of my previous videos, and we actually saw this happen when we were going it over in our um, application. We saw when each of these were executed. And knowing when, or, by the way, I would highly suggest everyone read over this entire thing as it um, is incredibly useful. But um, it's, it's really important knowing when um, to do what in each of these activities. Most of the time, uh, you're only going to have to override a few of these. Like, for instance, in most of my applications, I only override maybe on create, on destroy, and then maybe uh, on pause and on resume. I mean, on stop, maybe. But um, usually, you'll find yourself only implementing a few of these different ones. And it's, um, I mean, if you don't have to save anything to persistent storage, um, you won't really have to do very much of that, but especially if you're doing um, uh, changes in orientation, then you're definitely going to have to uh, manage that. And I might have a future video where I discuss that more in depth, but uh, that's all for now. I hope this really um, helped you guys out, and I will probably be putting this code up on my website just so you can look at it. Uh, link will be in the description. Uh, make sure to comment, rate, subscribe. This is Quackcore signing out.